Well, thank you for that, uh, that very gracious introduction. What I thought I'd do today is uh, take you uh, through a series of vignettes uh, in my career that uh, included um, participation in four, if not five, different uh, paradigm changes in biology, starting with developing new technologies, the Human Genome Project, this idea of cross-disciplinary uh, biology, and ending up with systems biology in its uh, immediate application, uh, systems medicine, uh, that is going to turn out to be predictive, preventive, personalized, and participatory, and we'll talk about uh, each of those things. What <clears throat> has been remarkable about each of these changes is in every case so far, we had to create a new organizational structure uh, to realize the full potential of these opportunities, and that's a point I'll return to again at the end of uh, my lecture. I went to Caltech in, in 1970 as a young assistant professor, and I told my chairman that uh, I wanted to spend half my time doing molecular immunology and half my time doing technology development, and I think he was skeptical but didn't say anything until three years later when he came into my office and he said, uh, I'd like to advise you in the strongest possible terms to give up this technology development. And I said, uh, well, I wasn't going to do it. It was working well, and I didn't see any reason why I should. It wasn't, in fact, until 20 years later I asked Bob Sinchimer why exactly he said that, and, and the answer was really revealing. It was that the older faculty in the Division of Biology had felt it was unseemly to have engineering and biology, and in fact, he said they'd suggested I be moved into engineering, and he said at least I didn't uh, ask that of you. But, uh, and, and this theme will uh, come up again in just a few moments. What I was interested in doing with instrumentation was deciphering biological information. And at that time, we knew about DNA and RNA and proteins, and they worked together in various ways to, to, to create uh, living organisms. And I was interested in figuring out how we could develop technologies that could uh, decipher uh, each of the different types of biological information. But I was also utterly convinced that although one had to take the frontier problems of biology to drive the decision about what new technology to create, once you'd done that, <clears throat> those technologies had the uh, chance to really revolutionize biology, and we certainly saw that with the uh, automated DNA sequencer, and in fact, with each of these <clears throat> five instruments that you've, uh, you've heard described. It was early in 1979 when one of my friends came to me and said, look, it's a little unfair. You at Caltech have these instruments or in the process of developing them. Why don't you... Uh, why don't you uh, commercialize these instruments, and I thought, gee, that sounded like a great idea, so I went to the president of Caltech, Murph Goldberger, and I said, it's been suggested we commercialize these instruments, and I got this incredible lecture on the role of an academic institution is scholarship and education. If you want to commercialize anything, you'll have to do it by yourself. So. I said, okay, I'll do it. And I went out to, over the next year and a half, 19 different instrument companies, and I'm not inarticulate about the vision and what these instruments were going to do, but at the end of that time, I was zero for 19. It was really quite a depressing experience. And then Bill Bowes called me from San Francisco, one of the early pioneers in uh, venture capital, and he said, well, I hear you've unsuccessfully shopped these things around. I'll give you $2 million, and why don't we start a a company with, uh, with these, and I said, that sounded terrific. So I went back to our president, and he said, no way, Caltech doesn't get involved in venture capital. That's dirty money. We don't want to contaminate ourselves with this. Uh... <coughs> but I persuaded him. I wore him down, and just as we were to sign the documents, I unfortunately gave a lecture to the Caltech trustees, who of, uh, the head of whom was uh, Arnold Beckman, Beckman Instruments, and, and I'll say parenthetically, I'd gone to Beckman Instruments three different times, and the head of the Spinko division the last time said, Lee, don't come back, we really aren't interested in this. But I gave this, this talk about the vision of these instruments, and Arnold came running up after my talk and said, 
this is terrific. This is exactly what Beckman Instruments needs for the future. And I said, well, I wasn't so sure his people felt the same way. And he said, nonsense. And that led to complications that I won't even begin to describe for you. But in the end, the venture capital won. We started a company called Blight Biosystems. It was a new organization for doing uh, technology development. And I learned two really important things. One, with big ideas, go to the top. Don't fool around with middle-level people who are interested in P&L and things like that. And two, I learned this really important idea that for big, bold new ideas, almost never can they be done in old bureaucratic organizations because they will put neither the resources, they won't recruit the talent, they won't make the focus of creating these new opportunities real. So, uh, that, and those lessons have held me uh, extremely well.